You can call me Elizabeth. We were all buried at sea. We just didn't know it yet. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ji Young here, and welcome to a Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea trailer analysis. A few days ago, we finally got our first look at the upcoming DLC for this critically acclaimed game, and it's time to break down what little clues were left for us in this trailer. It goes without saying, spoiler warning for those who have not played Bioshock Infinite or any of the Bioshock games. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive right into it. <laughs> Right off the bat, we are taken to Booker DeWitt's office during his days as a Pinkerton agent. The date is clearly shown to be December 31st, 1958, the night before the fall of Rapture. That's right folks, US players will actually experience the city of Rapture in its former glory and during its descent. Also interesting to note are similarities between this desk and the one found in Bioshock Infinite, featuring the same ashtray, alcohol bottles, race forms, and badge. The main difference here is that Booker's office is not as big of a mess as in Bioshock Infinite. Everything just seems more in order, meaning that this version of Booker likely has his shit together a little more. And we now here's another difference between Bioshock Infinite and Burial at Sea offices. In Bioshock Infinite, written on the door was Booker DeWitt, investigations into matters both public and private. The door in this DLC not only features a different font more reminiscent of the original Bioshock, but also only features the words Booker DeWitt, Private Investigator. I'm guessing these little differences are attributed to the simple fact that there are many different versions of Booker each with slightly different jobs. Many different lighthouses, so to speak, if you've played Bioshock Infinite. As soon as Booker DeWitt opens the door, we are taken to a fully living and breathing rapture, and those who've played the original may recognize the man on the insignia as Andrew Ryan, with a familiar quote, No gods or kings, only man. The footage then proceeds to show off actual life within this beautiful underwater setting, even showing what could be little sisters before their heavy genetic modifications to become hosts of Adam. We are also given a look at Jet Postals in action. Jet Postal, for those who don't know, is a brand that specializes in mail delivery throughout Rapture by using tubes known as pneumotubes. Those who have played the original Bioshock may have found Jet Postal stations or pneumotubes scattered around the ravaged Rapture. Finally, we are shown the most surprising bit of footage. Before we talk about the female character, notice that Booker's powers resemble those of the original Bioshock, the plasmids, rather than ones found in Bioshock Infinite, Vigors. This one in particular is likely a fire plasmid, Incinerate. Also notice that Booker seems to have much more control over his power in this game than in Infinite or than the player character in Bioshock 1 for that matter. And overall, he just seems a little bit less clueless about what's going on and what he's getting into. Unlike in Infinite, during which he seems to have no idea about the city in the sky, in Burial at Sea, Booker seems much more informed about this otherworldly place known as Rapture. Anyways, here's the surprising bit, during which we see Elizabeth in a completely different light. She has this very sexy, noir feel to her, different from anything seen in Infinite. I find it appropriate that she's wearing the bird pin in this footage, since this version of Elizabeth does not give off the vibe that she's been trapped in a cage for the most part of her life, like in Infinite. She seems much less innocent and much more confident, mature, and knowledgeable, which is clear indication that she's more of a free bird in this timeline than one trapped in a cage. And with that, the trailer blacks out to later reveal the title of the game, Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea. Those wondering why the title contains the words Episode 1, it's because this DLC is the first of two episodes. Now note the noir artwork on the side, which is an interesting direction in my opinion, one that I totally dig. In the artwork, you will also notice that the AD mark on Booker's hand will make a return, which stands for Anna DeWitt. I don't know if this symbol will play as big of a role as in Bioshock Infinite, but considering it's there, it's safe to assume that the game will continue to expand upon this complicated father-daughter relationship, this time in a new yet familiar setting and under completely different circumstances. I am looking forward to it. Before I take my leave, I would like to rewind and talk about what Booker DeWitt says throughout the trailer. Even in a utopia, someone needs to clean up the mess. And that's where I come in. The girl promised me a way out. And I was desperate enough to believe her. We were all buried at sea. We just didn't know it yet. 
Essentially, Booker DeWitt seems to have been sent to Rapture as part of a job to clean up the mess, to be more precise. And by cleaning the mess, I'm assuming he's talking about police work, since he is a Pinkerton agent. Although I have heard mobsters and gangs and whatnot use the term as well, so there is also the chance that Booker has gotten himself involved in criminal activity. Regardless, whether it be police work or criminal activity, don't expect everything to be as it seems. Keep in mind that in Bioshock Infinite, we were led to believe that the phrase bring us the girl and wipe away the debt was his job description, when in reality, it was about the deal he had already made with Comstock. So God knows where the story for this version of Booker will lead. Whatever life he's chosen in this timeline, he wants out of it. And for whatever reason, Elizabeth presents herself as a solution. Now, based on the fact that he says, I was desperate enough to believe her, I'm assuming things won't go as planned, especially since the game begins the day before Rapture goes to hell, which is an event foreshadowed by Booker when he says, we were all buried at sea, we just didn't know it yet. Now of course that last quote could also be metaphorical rather than literal, but until we get more context on the game's story, we will have to wait to find out. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in, let our nation know in the comments below if you notice anything that I missed. Also look forward to a second Burial at Sea video in which I will talk about everything we know so far about the game based on what other journalists have uncovered and based on what Ken Levine himself has said. And to be further updated on Bioshock news, be sure to join the nation and subscribe to Young Gear. I'll see you guys next time, thank you very much, and Young out!